Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to one of the world's greatest places, literally. Time Magazine earlier this week designated this new park one of the greatest places in the world to see. So that's no secret to us, but it's new to West Virginia. This is the first time we've ever been on this list, um, and we could not be more excited. So thank you all for being here today. Um, I get to do a lot of events, and this is one I'll always remember, being here at this new park and getting this international attention. So thank you guys for being here. I wanna thank everyone in the community for everything that you've done. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So I wanna thank everyone here. Um, this has been an amazing success because of everyone in this entire community and in the state pulling together. So it started with our congressional district saying, we're gonna make this happen and fighting to make it happen. But now we're seeing all of you coming together to welcome folks from all around the world. So you guys know I always have numbers. I promise I don't have very many, but I do have a couple I'm really excited to share. So in the month of June, the state welcomed more than 3 million visitors. So that is, um, so that is one of the biggest months we have on record. It's the biggest month I've seen. I don't know how far we can go back, but it is an unbelievable thing to get 3 million travelers into a state that only has 1.8 million people. So we're really excited statewide about tourism. I wanna to narrow down a little bit. In this region, the Park Service reports that we have nearly a 40% year over year increase since the designation. So again, huge numbers. And one more. So last year, January 1st to June 30, we had 17,283 people rafting on our rivers. At the end of June this year, we ended the month with 42,885. So I think those numbers speak for themselves at what this designation has done. So again, thank you all very, very much. So I think back to just over four years ago when I took this job and I was sitting at the governor's inauguration. It was cold. I barely knew the governor. He'd interviewed me five or six times, but I hadn't worked with him before. And he was going on and on about tourism. There was a lot about tourism in that speech. And I was sitting there and I was so nervous. I didn't know what to do. I could barely speak. First, he kept talking about Michigan and I was thinking, gosh, those people in Michigan are gonna hate me. And then he kept talking about this vision he had for growing tourism and how we were gonna be one of the fastest growing states and we were gonna be that state that everyone looked to. And I just had this pit in the bottom of my stomach thinking, gosh, I hope we can do this. And over the last four years, we figured out that the governor has led us to do this. It started out with tripling the budget, we rebranded, we've invested in the parks, now we've got this designation. So governor, I can never thank you enough for leading us here, but I think these numbers speak for the results. Thank you. So Governor, I'm gonna turn it over to you and you tell us what you think about this designation. Well, first of all, let me say this. I do really believe, I do really believe we live in the greatest place on the entire planet. And I did really believe that our upside on tourism is off the chart. I still believe that even today, we're still just touching absolutely around the plate and the real meat and potatoes are still coming. Now, you know, I thank Senator Capito and Congressman Miller and absolutely, you know, I, I can see Jack back there. I, I, I can't see very many others because I don't, I don't really know. But I thank you for all those that are in this great community. I thank all of our, our you know, both Senator Manchin, Senator Capito, all of our congressional delegation, all the absolute effort of the community and everyone that is behind this effort today, behind all the efforts of this great state. Now, you know, we know, and I keep saying the same thing, but we have known forever how great it is to be in West Virginia. The problem always was the outside world never got it, never got it. So maybe they had to have a big guy that really believed and wouldn't absolutely turn it loose. 
But Chelsea Ruby has been a superstar beyond belief. Secretary Ruby, the job she's done, and, and they should all clap, because the job you've done, Chelsea, is unbelievable. And I mean that with all sincerity. You know, she's stuck on on, and I love people that have enthusiasm and passion for what they do. I really believe, and I've believed it forever, if you're a stick in the mud around me, I wish somebody would get the stick and beat you with it, because I don't want you around me. That's all there is to it. I salute all the people that are in my office and all the great work they've done. I salute just everybody. This is a collaborative effort that is now a reality, and it is on the way to becoming something that maybe, just maybe, none of us could have ever imagined what it really could become. So all those, all the woes that work for our parks, all those that work in this field in any way, just continue to dream big. This couldn't be absolutely unbelievable. Imagine, imagine Time Magazine designating us as one of a hundred, one of a hundred of the greatest places on the planet. Imagine, just imagine, imagine how great it can be. Don't dream small. I mean, for God's sakes of living, if you're going to dream, at least make it worthwhile. And in life, absolutely, if we will keep stretching, stretching, for the sky in West Virginia, we'll get there. We're on our way right now. So many good things are happening in West Virginia, it's off the chart. We continue to kick six surplus after surplus. We're paving every road known to man. Every single thing is happening right, right, right now. Now we can slip back or we can do just this. I'll promise you if there were a turkey goblin on the top of that hill, even though I broke all to pieces, I'd some way make it up there. But absolutely, going up there, the t steepest part is always going to be at the top. We're right at the top. And the steepest part to getting across the top is going to be right now. We've got a real opportunity, West Virginia. And I love you with all my soul. And we're, if we keep all pulling the rope together, it's been tough going with this year plus of pandemic and everything that we've gone through. And we've still got to keep our guard up because we could slip back. But absolutely, this day marks an incredible day, an incredible another, another giant step that we've made. So, Shelly, I think it's you now to come up and talk to us and absolutely... What an incredible, incredible senator, Shelley Capito. Oh, bless you, bless you. Well, thank you, Governor. Uh, we wouldn't all be celebrating today uh, the, uh, I think, the commitment that you've made at the state. Uh, you obviously have great wisdom in hiring Chelsea Ruby. We, uh, she's metric driven. She knows what works and what doesn't work. She works great with the federal de delegation and really um, putting forth your dreams uh, for this state so that everybody can experience what we, those of us who live here, are lucky to experience every day. So I didn't know in your three million uh, visitors that had come through. Now, Carol and I come through every week, so we've, get, we've been counted about 16 times probably because we come home. And uh, we can't get here fast enough. It's always, a, it's always a race to see who can get back home to West Virginia fast enough. Uh, when we had the vision to make this a, a national park, it really came from the, many of you that are in the audience today. It was a dream of this region of uh, West Virginia. It was a dream of those who love the river and love our beautiful landscapes, who came to both me and Senator Manchin and said, can you make this happen? And, you know, it sounds easy, but it's not really that easy because we don't have that many national parks in this country. And now we have one in West Virginia. And I can't tell you walking the halls of Congress, whether it's a staff member, whether it's a fellow senator, whether it's somebody who's just visiting, when they find out I'm from West Virginia, almost to the person will say, I just visited the national park or I'm getting ready to go visit your national park. So that just shows you if you're close enough to the uh, 
to the population centers, what you've said all along, Governor, if we're close enough to all these people on the East Coast and they want out of there, believe me, I just left yes, uh, today, just got here today, uh, this is the perfect spot for them. The other thing I asked Chelsea was when I saw that we were Times uh, 100 top world bases, spaces, places, places. I said, well, did they rank them? Somebody asked me the other day, what number are we? And you know what? I'm self-ranking us number one. What do you think, Governor? Okay, okay. So we'll just, we'll just claim that, even though maybe we don't have the right to it. But what people will see when they come here is the true and complete story of West Virginia. Our heritage, our beauty, our uh, outdoor recreation, the wonderful people that uh, serve and, 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 and interact with everybody who comes to visit. You make us look so good. So thank you so much and thank you, Governor. It's always great to be on the stage here with you. Thank you. And oh, Carol, I, I mentioned Carol, but Carol carried the water over on the House side. It would have never gotten done without Carol Miller's commitment and dedication to this. So Carol, thank you for pushing it over the edge for us. Thanks. Carol, come on up here and talk to us. And I, ju I just thought of something. You know, it's always a play on words. You know, Shelly just said, you know, that, that why don't we just call ourselves first out of the hundred? You know, why don't we call ourselves number one out of the hundred greatest places, or number one of the hundred greatest places on the planet? And, I, and we could do that. I mean, that's... That's legal. We could be number one of the hundred greatest places. Carol, go. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here today. And what Shelley said is true. It, I mean, it was so. It was an honor for me to be able to push this through on the House side. And having friends on the Senate, we, we work so well together and our offices always communicate because you do have people that love West Virginia representing you. And this is one very big example of the love that we have. And, you know, I want to thank everybody and especially Chelsea, wherever she went. I think there's, there, there you are. I was still in the State House when she first came on working with you, and she was very quiet. And I remember her when she sat in the Finance Committee the very first time, and I looked at her, and she just had this look on her face like, I can do this. And I knew she could do it, and she is doing it, and she will continue to do it, because we have the bragging rights here in West Virginia. This is such a beautiful, beautiful spot. But to be able to have both Fayetteville and Hinton as these wonderful small towns welcoming people from all over the world, they're making memories in West Virginia. They, you know, the beautiful scenery, the family memories, the, the water, the trees, all of this and the people, it's our people. It's West Virginia through and through and we welcome people and treat them like they ought to be and want to be. So uh, to me, it's the memories that they make here and what this sign represents. We are number one. But my staff this morning said to me, team work makes dream work. Well, we have a big dreamer here big dreamer and his dream for our state continues having been in the state house for a number of years i understood when we just kept putting band-aids on problems and bandings on problems and everyone in this room knows what it feels like when you rip those band-aids off he ripped them off and he fixed what needed to be fixed in our state and we have so much potential and people all over the world are seeing it so god bless you all thank you for being here and thank you all for what you've done for our state thank you what a congresswoman what a congresswoman and i mean it i mean it you know what i i love about this is uh for the most part the women are always smarter than the men and uh and and really and truly between uh Carol and Shelley, we've got incredible representation, and uh, yeah, they've got they've got everything that makes it work. I mean, they've got intelligence and they've got enthusiasm and they've got passion for what they do, and they love us, and they absolutely love us. And you know that 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 makes a wheel turn. It really does. And so uh, so again, I thank both of you beyond belief. I really do. And uh, Jimmy. 
This man right here is the deputy of our Department of Transportation, and absolutely, Jimmy Riston is a star beyond belief. I always love how he wears his ties, and uh, I don't know where he got that, but maybe he got it from me running in the door of the of the Capitol and everything. And but uh, but nevertheless, you know, this man is truly something else. And I've got to just pause just one second to just say just this. I brought Jimmy over to the mansion to interview him, and I want you to hear this because I love this. You know, I said, Jimmy, you know, really and truly, I'm looking for somebody to really, you know, be the number two and head up the Department of Transportation and everything. And, you know, Jimmy, uh, can you give me some names? Can you give me some names of who that, who you would think would be really good? And he said, well, Governor, he said, let me just tell you this, that I know that I could do it. But I also know that I'm the only person that can do it. And really and truly, I'll never forget that. He did not say that being cocky. He said that, he said that because he knew his passion, he knew his love, he knew his intellect, and my God of living, what a job he's done. I mean, come up here and show us what we're going to change. I think Monday, is that correct? All over the place, you know, tens and tens and tens of signs are going to be changed to direct people right here. And this man is at the head of the helm with bird white and everything. They're doing an incredible job. Look at this now. Check this out. Our signs are going to be changed. They're going to direct people right here. And absolutely another great step forward to send people after people after people right here. You know, we are proud of our own pond. And I keep going back to that frog all the time. You know, the frog that's not proud of his own pond is not much of a frog, but we are proud. And I'll tell you, it's, it's working. It's really happening. So, Jimmy, thank you for all you do, buddy. I love you with all my soul. If you don't care, I want to add one more thing about the DOT. So I called them as soon as this designation took place, and I said, we need to get started on these signs. There's only a couple. It won't take that long. And Jimmy called me back. He said, do you know how many signs there are? How many are there, Jimmy? Over 80. Over 80. So over 80 of these signs. One thing that is really, really great about this park is that it's huge. It's multi-county. Um, it's over 7,000 acres, but or just the park part. But it's really expansive, and we need a lot of signage. So we really appreciate Highways stepping up, doing this, finding the funding to make it happen. Um, another thing that Highways has done that's really, really important in the community is we have just seen a ton of visitors at the Endless Wall Trail. All the locals here know about this, and it was causing some real congestion issues on the road. Again, I picked up the phone and called Jimmy and said, is there anything we can do? Well, just a couple weeks later, they've created 55 more parking spots along the side of the road to relieve that congestion. So thank you to DOH. So we've got two more folks that we want to recognize. And again, I want to echo the governor's thanks to Senator Capito and to Congresswoman Miller. Um, but I'd also like to welcome Ben Spurlock from Senator Manchin's office, because this has been a big lift for our federal delegation. Thank you, Chelsea. My name is Ben Spurlock, and it's a pleasure to be here on an absolutely perfect day on behalf of United States Senator Joe Manchin. The senator uh, sends his uh, best regards and appreciates the extended invitation for being here on such a special occasion and sends his regrets that he wasn't able to attend in person, but he did send me with remarks on his behalf. But first, he wanted me to recognize Senator Capito, Congresswoman Miller, Governor Justice, all the state, county and local officials that have worked diligently to make not just this unveiling happen, but the many, many wild and wonderful things that are happening here in our nation's newest national park. It is my distinct honor to welcome those attending the unveiling of the signage for our beautiful New River Gorge National Park. Whether whitewater rafting down the New River, hiking the challenging and scenic trails in Grandview, sightseeing through the historical town of Thurmond, or exploring the unique botanical ecosystems that exist within Sandstone Falls, the New River Gorge epitomizes the West Virginia spirit and way of life. 
Now designated as a national park and preserve, visitors will come in from across the country to experience the beauty and rich history of the New River Gorge, while also contributing to our lo local economies and meeting our many wonderful people. I am incredibly proud to have worked with Senator Capito to recognize one of our country's most beautiful places. It is a shining example of bipartisanship and how the great outdoors brings people together. And that's something we can all be proud of. In the Mountain State, we have a rich history and at the center of it is our love and appreciation for the outdoor playground for which we have been blessed with. Today's unveiling marks the culmination of years of hard work and partnership by our local leadership to make this designation a reality. And thank you for all of your hard work and God bless. Best regards, Joe. And last but not least, I would like to introduce Carmen Chapin from the National Park Service. They have been amazing partners. We gave them a big project. They took it on quickly, did everything they could. So please. Hello, my name is Carmen Chapin, and thank you all for being here today. I'm the acting superintendent of New River Gorge National Park and Preserve. It feels kind of amazing just to say that. I would like to extend a special thanks to Governor Justice, Secretary of Transportation White, and Secretary of Tourism Ruby for their assistance in getting this important project completed so quickly. And I would also like to recognize the contributions of Senator Manchin and Capito and Congresswoman Miller in making this dream a reality. Without you, we would not be here today. Welcome to your newest national park. Today we recognize the installation of 80 major highway signs on the new designation of New River Gorge as a national park and preserve from the state of Western Virginia. Like the change of the name itself, these signs will direct visitors towards all the treasures that this national park has to offer. The new name more accurately reflects the abundance of scenic and recreational opportunities here along the New River. We are pleased to see the new signs turned around so quickly after the renaming took place this winter. Already we can see the positive effects of the name change. New River Gorge has been in the press more than ever, driving interest in our park and preserve to new levels. Interest in the site has never been as high since it was set aside as a national river back in 1978. A whole new generation of visitors is learning about the New River and about historical towns like Thurman. The 80 new traffic signs which were designated, produced, and will soon be installed for the park by the governor's office will help direct visitors to what is no longer one of the best kept secrets of our region. On behalf of the National Park Service, I thank you, Governor Justice, for these new signs and also for all of you who have done to support the park in our efforts to protect this special place for generations to come. Thank you. Well, I think we're pretty much done, but at the same time, I want to add just this. You know, Bray Carey's been in my office and worked with us for a long time. And Bray grew up, I think, in Hinton. And, uh, and it's an incredible town. Incredible town. That's all there is to it. And, but, well, you know, and we're, we have dedicated, you know, the legislature was just kind enough to, to make a big, big, big statement, you know, and dedicate some real resources in, in this area to, to possibly even do something with the, you know, with the train moving back and forth and everything. There is, there is so much possibility, you know, whether it be Fayetteville or Hinton or wherever it may be, you know, within striking distance of this incredible national park. But I'd leave you with just this. You know, whether you be jumping off the bridge over at Fayetteville or you be whitewater rafting or just wading and, and, and fishing for a wonderful smallmouth bass, hiking or whatever it may be, climbing, whatever, this park offers so much. You know, I can tell you that I know this is hard for you to believe and looking at me here, but one time I was skinny and I had brown hair. And absolutely every morning of the duck season, Every single morning with the season that came in in the last days of December and last through January, in the god-awfulest cold that you could ever imagine, 
I would get up way before daylight by myself with 12 decoys in a decoy, you know, coat that I had and my shotgun and chest waders, and I would come somewhere between here and Sandstone and wade out in the river before daylight and put my decoys out and hide behind a rock or a log or whatever like that in trying to get a duck that I didn't get very often. But absolutely, this place is so spectacular, it's unbelievable. It touches all of our hearts, and absolutely, it'll touch your soul. Really, when it really boils right down to it, it will make your soul and your heart better. That's all there is to it. So God bless each and every one of you, and a super thanks to our congressional delegation, Shelly and Carol for coming, Joe for all the great work you did, Jack, I see you back there, and all the great work you've did, done in the state. And so, great representation, great chance, great chance. Let's not screw it up. Thank y'all so much.